Fritz, and this is Sam, and together we are the Art You Miss. If you're watching this video, you've probably found us on our website or even on our Kickstarter page, and we just want to take a minute to tell you about a new project we're working on called The Art You Missed. And the project originally started kind of around some conversations that Fritz and I had. And do you remember that first conversation that we had? I do. I think we were sitting in a coffee shop talking about music or art, and if I recall, uh, the great folk artist John Prine came on the radio and I asked if he knew who John was. Right. And like most of our conversations that, that morning, he asked, do you know who John Prine is? And all I could say was I had heard of him, but I wasn't necessarily able to say all that much more about it. So that struck a conversation about art. And it was actually in that initial conversation where I realized how much I had missed and how much Fritz knew. And so it led to different conversations and ultimately this project, The Art You Missed. We had a great conversation then. Uh, I was interested in it. Um, I've studied history and art my whole life with a special focus on music. Um, I've hosted a jazz history show for over 20 years on public radio, but more importantly, I've tried to stay in touch with art, both historical art and new art, uh, art defined broadly, music or visual art, literature, film and the like. And uh, it's something I'm passionate about and I love talking with almost anybody about it. And Sam and I have had dozens of discussions in the time we've known each other um, about art that's no longer remembered, cutting edge art and what the connections between that art and what has gone before are. Uh, and it's something we've just had a wonderful time sharing. So after hearing, after hearing Fritz talk about art a little bit and hearing about his experience and just the years and years and years of experience that he's had, I asked him, what about putting something together a little more regular, a little more frequent, and somewhat more formal? Like, let's record it. Let's record these conversations and talk about my generation's perspective on today's art, but even how that ties into yesterday's, because often there's a disconnect and he seemed to think it was a good idea. It's a fantastic idea and fascinating to me. It's something, I, as I've said, I've spent much of my adult life thinking about. And um, art is always a very dynamic thing. We always have new artists and it always raises the question, um, where did this art come from? Some people think, it, think of it as a step forward, that this is progress or you're moving an art form forward. Other people just see new art creations as beautiful, worthwhile things in themselves. So there's always this interesting tension between what are the roots of a new art form and what are its merits on its own. And it's a fascinating discussion to have. Sam and I have been talking about these things often and uh, we think about it as an inclusive thing and we'd love to involve more people in these discussions. So when Sam came up with the idea, it seemed to me a natural thing. And one of the, one of the tie-ins that, that our conversations really led me to and just reminded me of is recently at the, the Grammy performance, um, there was this amazing performance with Mumford & Sons, the Avett Brothers, and Bob Dylan. And it was just this incredible moment because you had two of the biggest bands today in my generation's world and teaming up with Bob Dylan, arguably one of the biggest artists of yesterday and even today's world. And so that, that, entire, that entire performance really summed up almost a picture of this program because my generation sees Mumford and & Sons and the Avid Brothers playing and we think, oh, th those are our guys, so to speak. But we look at Bob Dylan and we, we think we know about him, but we, but we don't really. And even then, we, when we were talking about that performance, that led to different, different conversations about influences. And who did you tell me? You said something about Mumford and Sons? Right. When you listen to their music, it's, again, it's wonderful music on its own. But um, at least to my ears, you can hear roots in the English folk revival led in the early 1970s with groups such as Fairport Convention, carried on by Sandy Denny and Richard Thompson. Many people know of Richard Thompson, fewer people I suspect know of Cindy Denny, fewer still know of Fairport Convention. So there's certainly um, wide, wide knowledge of someone as prominent and enduring as Bob Dylan. But another task that I think we should look into is um, who has been swept aside by the river of history as we move on. And there are so many wonderful artists who are not nearly as well known now. And they're useful to know of not only as influence and sources of what we hear now, but things themselves, artists themselves, who warrant our attention. So even as I hear Fritz talk about Fairport Convention and Richard Thompson, it just, it just brings up to me again how my generation, we really posture ourselves sometimes as if we know everything about art, 
And the truth is, we're really only somewhat familiar with today's art, today's music, today's film, poetry, literature, visual art. We're, we're somewhat familiar with today's, and we, we pretend like we know so much about yesterday's and even the day before that. What's amazing about that, though, is we have the passion to, to get to know it. I'm not taking anything away from my generation and my peers. I love that. I love that we're so into it, which probably is very similar to yesterday's generation, but there's something that, that we've missed, and it just makes me ask the question, this indie music that we love so much and we think is so great, is it really possible that it's independent from history altogether? So that's one of the questions we have to wrestle through. Can anything in art ever be independent of history? Um, we'll have a great time talking about these things. So if that's at all interesting to you, if, if you think that this is going to be worth your time, if you find yourself in my generation and you want to learn about what you've missed, you don't want to just settle for what is the next thing on the cover of your favorite magazine or music blog, then I think we have something for you. And certainly if you're in Fritz's generation and you think you have something to add to the conversation, there's going to be ways for you to do that as well. So if you want to get involved, we have a couple things listed on our website and on this Kickstarter page, whether it's through social media and your Facebook and Twitter page, whether it's just through spreading our story and telling people about it, and also through donating and helping invest in the art you missed through Kickstarter. We have some rewards on the sidebar of the page. We would love for you to get involved and really help us push this forward. You're not simply supporting Fritz and I in this program, You're really helping us unveil and uncover some of the art that we've missed. Thanks. Thanks.